Y'all ready for this? Hey, what's up, everyone? Nurse Jar here. Guys, I am thrilled to be here with you today. Why? Because in this video, I'm going to be showing y'all how to do Vinny Puncture. Yes, this is my first nurse training video and I'm super excited. But before I get started, y'all know what I'm going to tell y'all, right? If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please go ahead and kick that subscribe button, hit the like button on this video and in on any of my other videos that have been helpful to you. And if you like to be notified whenever I upload new content or go live, go ahead and ring that notification bell. Guys, I am thrilled. Let me tell you, uh, you know, three of my most favorite task or interventions, nursing interventions to do uh, while I was a floor nurse was one, initiating a peripheral uh, intravenous line or a PIV, doing arterial sticks and drawing blood. Yes. And no, I am not a vampire. Okay. I am not a vampire, but those were just my three most favorite interventions um, to do or tasks to do. So I wanted to dedicate my first training videos for nurses on venipuncture. Now, yes, you do have lab techs in the hospitals. You have lab, you know, third party lab techs that come into nursing homes to draw blood. But, um, you know, if you are working in a hospital, certain disciplines such as ICU or the emergency room, um, a lot of times you are drawing your own blood, okay? Not laboratory, okay? So this is um, a video to watch, guys. I'm super excited. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So when you are setting up to do venipuncture, the first thing that you want to do, of course, is read your um, your lab requisition form or your doctor's orders. OK, so this is um, similar to what a lab requisition form will look like. It has all of the laboratory tests and whichever one the doctor wants, um, it will be marked. OK. Or you can just have a regular doctor's order, right? Uh, stating which lab needs to be drawn. So what I like to do is go ahead and collect all of my supplies. Um, I always collect, um, you know, a couple of more uh, two by twos or, you know, usually I'll bring in two pairs of gloves instead of one pair, <clears throat> excuse me. And you know, two to three alcohol pads just in case, right? Because you never really know what will happen, right? So I always like to be uh, prepared. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to collect my supplies. Once I get them collected, I'll uh, shoot the screen over to the table so you can see everything that I have, okay? All right, guys, so I have all of my supplies on the table. Um, I have a couple of two by twos, a couple of alcohol pads. Um, I have the red top uh, vacuum tube, vacu tainer tube. I have my vacuum tainer with needle. I have my tourniquet. I have paper tape and I have two pairs of gloves. I have two labels. Okay, two labels. Y'all can see those. My requisition form and my specimen bio bag. All right, guys. One thing that I like to do is I like to prep everything that I need uh, before I actually do the draw. So as far as my labels, if y'all can see here, I go ahead and I pre-fill my label. The only thing that I do not fill in is for the time. Why? Because, you know, you may not get that sick, right? So if you put the time, it may not be accurate. So I always like to put the time after I have actually drawn the blood, right? I look at my watch to get the um, exact time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place one of these 
labels on my bio bag. Okay, here. Place it on my bio bag. And I'm going to place the second label on my tube. Okay. Just like so. All right. So I have everything filled out except for the time. So once I draw the blood, that's the only thing I'll need to fill in is the time. Okay. So I have this set up. Um, you'll want to make sure that you check the name on the lab order or the lab requisition form and have your patient to state their name and birth date and compare it with what is on your doctor's order or lab requisition form, okay? Why? Because you want to make sure you're sticking the right patient, right? You don't want to stick um, the wrong patient. I'm also going to double check which lab I need to draw to make sure I have the correct container, okay? And I do. So I'm doing a renal panel, so I have a red top here. Uh, your red tops usually will not have any additives in them, okay? Now what I'm going to do, once I verified my patient's identity, have compared it with the lab requisition form or the doctor's order. I double check to make sure um, that I had the correct color tube for the lab that I'm to draw. I'm going to go ahead and fold this bad boy up and I'm going to place it in the back pocket of the specimen bag, right? So my bag is ready to go, okay? So I won't have to worry about that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and um, wash my hands. But, of course, you'll wash your hands before, you know, or once you enter the patient's room, right? So you wash your hands. I'm just going to go ahead and get a little hand sanitizer here since I've been touching on things, right? The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place the tourniquet on my resident's arm like so okay now when you place the tourniquet you want to make sure that you do not leave the tourniquet on the person's arm for longer than one minute okay Okay, so now that I have the tourniquet on, I'm just going to fill, right, palpate for vein, okay? And I'm going to just see where, um, you know, where I want to stick the patient, right? Once I find the vein, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the tourniquet. Now, hopefully y'all saw how I placed the tourniquet. I'm going to do it again because you want to be able to easily loosen that tourniquet. So I'm going to show y'all close up um, how I tied my tourniquet, okay? Okay, so I'm just wrapping it around the person's arm. I'm making sure that there are no twists, okay? So the tourniquet is flat and it's straight. You don't want there to be any twists because that could actually be a little painful and discomforting to the patient. So now what I'm doing is I'm just crisscrossing like so, okay? And then I'm taking one end and I'm making a slip knot, okay? That way I know which tab to pull. I'm going to pull the tab that has this little um, slip knot in it, okay? And then voila, right? Easy peasy, yes, yes. All right, so once I've found the vein that I want to um, insert the needle in, I'm going to go ahead and place my gloves on. And then I'm going to clean the site. Now, when you clean the site, you want to clean it from the vein in a circular motion outward. So I'm going to take my alcohol pad and remember I'm starting from the vein and in a circular motion I'm working outward from the vein, okay, that I'm going to pierce. 
Okay. You can also use a core prep as well. Okay. Now, while the alcohol is drying, um, this is when I will go ahead and get everything else prepped. I'm going to prep my dressing and I'm just using a two by two and I'm folding it into a quarters and then I'm placing it on the tape like so. So I have my dressing now, okay? I have my dressing prepped. I'm gonna place it right here on the table. There's my dressing, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my vacuum container, my vacuum container. And if I can see where I need to open it up, we'll be in, we'll be doing some good here. There we go. I got it open. I try to put all my dirty supplies in one area. So what I'm doing now is I'm just checking the tubing um, and then I'm going to uncap the needle and check to make sure my needle is straight, it's not bent. Make sure that the bevel is intact and I'm going to show you all now, okay? There we go. So you can see the bevel of the needle, okay? You wanna make sure that the bevel is on top when you pierce the skin. All right, I'm going to place my needle down away from the patient, okay? And I have it on a two by two so it can stay clean. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm going to pierce the vein in the lower arm, I'm just going to move, if I can get that plastic off, I'm going to move my tourniquet a little bit down further because you want the tourniquet to be at least a half an inch to an one inch above the site that you're going to pierce, okay? And then I'm just going to re-tie or secure my tourniquet. Again, I'm creating a slip knot. So it's easy for me to define where I have to pull to loosen the tourniquet. Once I have the tourniquet in place, I'm going to pick up my vacuum tainer and my tube. I'm going to place my tube in the vacuum tainer, but I'm not going to uh, pierce the seal, okay? Now what I'm going to do is with one finger, I'm going to anchor the vein by gently pulling down on the vein. Why am I doing this? Because I do not want that vein to roll once I pierce the needle, right? Because your objective, your goal is to make that first stick, okay? You want to be successful with that first stick because you don't want to keep poking the person. Okay, so now that I'm anchoring the vein, I'm going to go in at a five to 15 degree angle, making sure the bevel of the needle is up and I'm going to pierce the skin. Once I get a flashback, I'm going to break the seal on the tube and you can see the blood is now running into the tube. Once I do that, I'm going to make sure I secure and I'm going to release the tourniquet and continue collecting the blood, okay? Once I've collected enough blood in the tube, I'm going to gently press about maybe a half an inch above where I've inserted the needle and then I'm going to gently remove the needle while still holding gentle pressure uh, just above the insertion or the piercing site. I'm going to take my pre-made dressing and I'm going to apply it over the area that I pierced, apply a little pressure to it while I secure the dressing.
the vacuum container I'm going to place in the sharps container. Okay, so now I'm just going to remove my gloves without contaminating myself and I'm going to discard them into the waste bin. I'm going to use a little hand sanitizer to sanitize my hands. Make sure I get them all nice and dry. Okay, and once I've sanitized my hands, I'm going to go ahead and put on some clean gloves. I'm going to record the time, which was 1608. I like using military time, guys. 1608 is 408 p.m. And then I'm going to place the lab draw or the sample into the uh, specimen bag. I'm going to clean up all of my trash here and I'm going to dispose of everything. All right, guys, now that I've disposed of all of my supplies, I would wash my hands and then I would either walk this down to lab or um, call lab up to come pick it up. Or um, like if you're in a hospital, they usually have a chute. You'll put it in the container, put it in the chute, press the button and it goes straight to the lab. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my first nurse training video. Let me straighten this up here. There we go. Yes. Now my head, it won't be chopping off my head. But I hope you all enjoyed my first nursing uh, training video. There will be more to come. Yes. Now there's just a couple of things that I think are important that I want to tell you when it comes to venipuncture, okay? Um, you know, there's three common sites. Um, to or, or vein sites to collect blood. Um, you know the goodie, right? The anticubital fossa or the AC, the bend of the elbow, right? You can use that area or the forearm, which I used in this training video, and also the back of the hand, okay? Those are the three most common um, vein sites that people use to draw blood and also to initiate a peripheral um, intravenous line. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, you just want to, I'm, I'm, I'm excited guys. I just don't know what else to say. Like I'm excited to be, uh, producing and editing. Ooh, I got to edit this video. Oh my gosh. And yes, I'm keeping this in so y'all can know all what I have to do. Okay. Cause I don't have no videographer, right? I do all my videos, but I enjoy doing it. But um, I hope that you all enjoyed. There is, um, you can either use a vacuum tainer or you can use a straight multi-purpose needle with a syringe uh, such as this, right? A straight needle. This is a 20 gauge, I believe. Yeah, and then I have like a, a five mil syringe. You can use that um, as well as the vacuum tainer um, to draw blood, right? Whichever way you feel comfortable with or whichever method the your patient prefers. Um, also, another good thing to keep in mind is um, I would always ask, um, you know, my patient, like which arm do they normally or usually draw blood out of, right? Because my goal, as I said earlier, is to make that first stick stick, right? Because I don't want to have to poke, keep trying to poke them to get blood, okay? So I always ask my patient, you know, um, which arm do they usually get or which arm, you know, do you prefer? Um, if they don't have a preference, I will normally check both arms, right? Uh, to see, you know, which arm has the better veins and then that is the arm that I will use, all right? Now, um, one thing that you want to remember, and in, in, you know what, I'll wait, because I'll wait when I actually um, do the video on, in, you know, the peripheral 
IV um, insertion. Yeah, I'll wait because I don't want to confuse anybody, right? But I do want you to keep in mind that if you are in school, um, you know, your school may have a, a different protocol or different method in um, you know, how they want you to collect blood, how you're going to be evaluated and tested on collecting blood. Um, just as, you know, if you go into, you know, one facility, they may have, um, you know, every facility has different nursing protocols. So just keep that in mind. Uh, my videos are supplemental to your training, okay? So it is not the grail, okay? It's just supplemental training just to give you a basic foundation of how uh, to perform certain tasks, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to stop rambling, okay? I'm rambling because I am excited. But um, hopefully you all got the gist of the video. Let me know in the comment section if this video is helpful to you, especially if you are a phlebotomy student, a phlebotomy instructor, or a nursing student or nursing instructor, you know, let me know um, if you like the video and if it was helpful to you. And I'm just trying to think of if there's any more pointers. Mm, I don't think so. The most important thing I can tell you is to pre-prep everything, right? Y'all saw how I pre-made my dressing. I, um, you know, pre-filled my labels and except for the time, right? I, I left, I filled in the time after I actually, uh, you know, draw, drew the blood and saw that, hey, I, I got this, you know, uh, tube filled. Um, and then I actually placed it on the tube and placed it on the specimen bag. Like I had everything pre ready um to go right um remember about anchoring the vein because some people's veins do roll okay they try to hide right so that way um you know you're keeping that vein stable also do not forget to apply gentle pressure uh before on the vein you know about a half inch up from the insertion site um when you're removing uh, the needle, okay, because you don't want blood spurting out or running out, okay? Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. There is more to come. Yes, I'm telling y'all, there's more to come. I'm super excited. Let me know how you like it again. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and kick that subscribe button, kick the like button on this video, and ring that notification bell. Y'all ready for this?